Well, good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, for us, it's a beautiful morning here in the United States and uh, very happy to be with you. And this, this evening, I'm gonna be sharing with you hiding the word for the last message. And there's a very good reason for this. And I'm gonna say a word of prayer just before we start. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to study your word and a little bit of science. Pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Captain James Ray was a fighter pilot back when the United States was in the Vietnam War. And his plane was shot down over a somewhat rural area and he shot out of his plane in a parachute, came to the ground, was rapidly captured and thrown into uh, a torture camp that was known as the Hanoi Hilton. While he was in there, he was put into solitary confinement where you can't have communication with other people. But one particular day, he began to hear a sound while he was in his cell. And that sound was kind of a tapping noise, tap, 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 tap. And, and he began to listen. And as, as he could hear the tapping on the wall from another cell, he noticed that those taps turned out to be letters from Morse code. And those letters turned into words. And those words became Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2, where it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence comes my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. You can imagine being in a, in a extremely traumatic situation where you're not supposed to have communication and hear, hear somebody is communicating to you the word of God. And though in that moment they could not see the hills around them, I'm sure their mind's eye took them off to memories of their past, maybe their childhood, looking up to the hills, looking up to the mountains and being comforted by God. And then he listened further, and it seems someone else tapped out another verse, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, where Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, that's an important verse to all of us today, but how much more when you're literally nearly starving in a prison cell to hear the words that this man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that we live by the word of God. You can imagine how that thrilled the soul of Captain James Ray. The reality is, is we are told that the time will come in a book called Last Day Events. The time will come when many will be deprived of the written word. But if this word is printed in the memory, no one can take it from us. Wow. The time is coming. When many of us, now it doesn't say all of us, but the reality is you don't know and I don't know if I will be one of the many people, if we will be one of the many people that will be deprived of the written word. But we do know this. If this word is printed in the memory, nobody can take it from us. The only place that the word of God can be hidden so that nobody will be able to take it from us is in our minds. You say, but Chad, I have, a, I have a smartphone, I have an iPhone, or I have an Android, and it, it knows all of the Bible for me. I don't need to know it anymore. I mean, it's worthless to memorize scripture today because you have it with you at all times. You don't need it. Oh, friend, that is a tragic mistake to believe. Number one, when you're in a time of temptation, do you always go to your phone to look for a, a promise verse? Probably not. But if we have these stored up in the mind, they can be a blessing to our own soul. But for the last message to go out, what if we happen to be one of the people that are deprived of our Bibles? Could it be that how would we witness? Sure, we could tell what God has done for our life, and we should because we are saved. Part of our lives that we're actually, uh, we overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the lamb, and by the word of our testimony. And we love not our lives unto the death. So we can share our, we can share about Jesus. We can share about our testimony, but how powerful if we have the loving words of Jesus Christ stored up in our minds and in our hearts that we can share the word of God with people around the world, even, even if we are deprived of our Bibles. I don't say these things to scare people. I believe this is great joy to know that we have this opportunity to store up God's 
were in our minds and in our hearts. You look at the life of Jesus. And if you read through the Gospels, you discover that no less than 78 times Jesus simply quotes from the Old Testament from memory. Now you say, oh, that's, that's nice. You might think, well, I could do that too if I happen to be God. Right? That would be easy. But that's not it. Jesus became a human being. When Jesus came out of the womb, when he came out of Mary, when he was born, did he go for a run? No, he didn't. Why? Because he was a baby. He had to learn to crawl. He had to learn to talk. He had to learn to walk. And he had to learn the scriptures in the same way that you and I have to learn them. And so Jesus, in part of his ministering to others, would actually have the word of God stored up in his mind and in his heart. We are uh, looking at some of the reasons for Bible memorization. We're going to look at several of them here. Why it is important in the context of the last message of mercy, in the context of our own spiritual lives, why is it beneficial to store up God's word in our minds and in our hearts? Number one is to simply know God on a deeper level. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning in verse 4, the word of God says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. Now, Jesus in the New Testament tells us that that passage right there is the greatest commandment in all of Scripture. Wow. But the very next verse goes on to say, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in your heart. So in the context of the most important scripture that tells us to love God with all our hearts, it tells us that the word of God should be stored up in our hearts. And one of the ways to do that is to know it by heart. The Jewish people, the father of the household, when their children began to grow and when they were first able to begin to speak, one of the things that the father would do, one of the first things he would do is to help them memorize this passage of scripture. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength. That's this passage here. So this is extremely important and Bible memorization is in the context of loving God with all of our hearts. Number two, the, the Bible memorization helps us, actually, it cleanses us. Actually, the Bible does, not Bible memorization per se. But you say, well, what do you mean? John chapter 15, verse 3, Jesus told us this. And now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. We are cleansed by the word of God as we spend time in the word of God, as we become covered with it, saturated with it, washed in the word of God. We are transformed by the power of the one who gave us the word, who gave us the Bible. And that is the Holy Spirit. We are cleansed through the Holy Spirit as we spend time uh, in God's word. And even as we go through our day, his words can come back to us and change the direction of our thoughts so that we can become in our thoughts more Christ-like. Number three, the storing up reading God's word and storing it up in your heart can help you to keep from sin. You may know these verses, they're very popular. And Psalms 119 verse 11 says, it asks a great question. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? And the answer comes back. So how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed or by paying attention thereto according to your word. So what does the text say? It says that if you want your way to be cleansed, you need to pay attention to the word of God. You need to spend time in the word of God. Um, now, what a beautiful thought. Then the next verse says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So the first verse tells us how are we going to be cleansed? Well, 
It's by paying attention to God's word. The next verse tells us what? My whole heart, if my whole heart is seeking God, well, that's important because you shall seek me and you shall find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And then verse 11 comes along. And verse 11 is very important. It says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not what? Sin against you. So by hiding God's word in our heart, by thinking over it in times of temptation and trusting that God will fulfill his word in, in connection with his promises, we can be kept from sin, just like Jesus was there in the wilderness. Three times he was tempted, and three times he said, it is written. And so too we can have that experience. Number four, the spending time in the Bible and even memorizing scripture can enhance our prayer life. Well, what do you mean? John chapter 15, verse 7 says, it tells us, uh, how's it go? It says, it, it says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So if God's word is abiding in us, now we can just meditate on what we read for devotions and that's a very powerful thing and we should do that. But secondarily, by having it stored up in our minds and in our hearts, as we go through the day, God's word may come back to us. And it says, if we abide in him and his words abide in us, we will ask what we will and it will be done unto us. So it enhances our prayer life. Does that mean if you memorize scripture that God will just answer all your prayers? Well, no. But as your mind becomes more in connect more connected with the word of god your prayers will be more in line with his will and when our prayers are in line with his will he will answer them. number five to know the truth first timothy chapter four verse six says take heed meaning pay attention watch out take heed unto yourself so watch yourself Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine or unto the teaching. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and those who hear you. Now, that's very important. That sometimes uh, here in the King James, the Bible uses the word doctrine. Now, we live in a strange time where people, when they hear the word doctrine, they think that oh, doctrine is not good. Well, Notice it says here that the doctrine can actually save you. So if something can save you, to me, that's very good, right? So, uh, but you could be lost with false doctrine. So false doctrine could be bad, but true, the truth of the word of God, the true teaching, the word doctrine just simply means teaching. So notice, but it doesn't just save us. It says it could save yourself and those who hear you. So this is a double point. So number one, knowing the word of God, reading it and studying it will help us to know the doctrine, to know the truth of the word of God, but it will also help us to share and save the souls of others. And this goes along with our next point here. Uh, our next point is for witnessing, and this fits perfectly with the last verse that one of the powerful ways to witness to other people is to, in a conversation, share the word of God. Uh, a friend of mine, you may have heard of him, his name is Don McIntosh. He works at Weimar Institute in California, the Health Institute. And he had, they have a health program there. And this man was coming, an atheist. He did not believe in God. And this man, uh, he, he realized the man didn't believe in God. So he didn't say, well, John chapter seven, verse three says, but what he would do is he would use wise verses from scripture and he would quote them to him, but not saying where they were found. He wouldn't say Proverbs chapter seven, verse six says, he would just quote what the Bible said. Like maybe, you know, something like, uh, he, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath. 
but grievous words stir up anger. And after hearing a number of these biblical quotations, the man didn't know they were from the Bible. And he said to my friend, he said to Don, wow, you have so much wisdom. And Don responded by saying, actually, those are just Bible verses. And the guy said, oh, you got me. <laughs> and, and he saw the wisdom in the word of God. God can use us in a very special way in ways you may never have thought possible by storing up God's word in your mind and in your heart. Now, here's an interesting story. This true story um, of a man, I heard him share the testimony. And he, what he shared was he was an atheist. He did not believe in God. And his wife was a Christian. He didn't go to church with her because he simply didn't believe. So she went to church every week. And she was in a class at church where they had to memorize like 60 or 70 verses. And they had to memorize them word perfect and had to quote them to somebody. And that person had to read them all and make sure they got it word perfect. And then they would graduate from the class. Well, she needed somebody to quote them to. And so she said to her daughter, hey, do you have some time? Uh, I have to, sh I have to go over something. Can you, can you help me out? And her daughter said, uh, uh, no, no, actually I'm, I'm, I'm busy right now. I, I can't. And her husband didn't know what she was asking for. And he said, Hey, I, I have time. What do you need? And she thought, well, I guess I'll do it with him. So she handed him the stack of 60 or 70 verses. And she went verse by verse, quoting these verses out loud to him. And as she's quoting them, he's listening. Now, he wasn't intending to listen to some Bible verses, but when she got to maybe the 69th verse and then finally quoted word perfectly the 70th verse, he said that the hair on the back of his neck just stood up and chills went through his soul. And he said at that moment, he thought something along these lines, this book must be inspired. And the next day, she was getting ready to go to church, and she saw him, and he went into his closet, and he began to get his best clothing, and he began to put it on. And she said, um, what are you getting dressed up for today? And he said, can I come to church with you? And he ended up giving his life to Jesus Christ that day in church. And the next weekend, he ended up joining that Bible memorization group. And he began to memorize those very same verses. And he later went on to say, I was saved by Bible memorization. And so very, very powerful what God can do. God can help us to witness, and not just exactly like this. God can give you other ways where you can share. You can actually tell people at times, hey, can I share with you? Maybe somebody's feeling down. And you begin to think, well, I want to share something with you. Do you mind if I share a verse of scripture with you? And you quote a verse that may comfort their soul in this time of bereavement, this time of trial. So number seven, studying God's word and memorizing God's word can help you to enable you to meditate day and night. We see this in John chapter or Joshua chapter one, verse eight which tells us that this book of the law, which to them was maybe the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. And then it goes on to tell them that this will actually help make, them success, make him successful. So God's word can help make us successful. Now you think, are you, is this uh, the prosperity gospel? If you, Memorize God's word and think about it. You'll be rich. No, that's not what I'm saying. But it will make us prosperous, at least in the spiritual battles of life, by meditating day and night in God's word. Very powerful. Now, this is quite powerful. Number eight is that, could it be that Bible memorization will actually strengthen your brain? I love science, science, and so I read about scientific studies um, almost all the time, on a very regular basis for a long time on a daily basis. And I was just looking at a study yesterday, but uh, this particular study that I'm going to share about 
is about memorization and its effect on the brain. This was a study done in Ireland. And what they discovered was they had people who were something like uh, 65 to 79. So these were not young people. And they put them on a regimen of memorization. They had to memorize uh, written out sentences of 500 words per week. That would probably be more than a chapter of the Bible every week. And these are elderly people. And so they tested their memory. They tested their brains beforehand. And then afterward, after I think it was six weeks of memorizing 500 words per week, you know, now this was not necessarily the Bible, but it was written out passages. And what did they discover? That after this time period, they tested their, their memories again. And bef that one of the things they discovered, it seemed to be producing changes in the brain, what are called neuroplasticity. Not only that, but it enhanced their memory on three different levels. So it, it enhanced their memory, it enhanced their ability to remember as we get older, we begin to think, what did I do yesterday? It enhanced their ability to remember what they did the day before. It enhanced their ability to read something and to retain what they had read. And it also enhanced their ability to remember lists of things. So we recognize that memorization can actually enhance our brain power and our memory. Now, God commanded us in scripture to memorize scripture. And all of God's commandments are for our good. And not only do memorizing script, not only does memorizing scripture help our soul and our spiritual life and our mental life, but it actually enhances our brain function. Very, very powerful. Number nine, storing up God's word in the mind and heart helps us with Bible promises for any occasion. We may be depressed, and there's a promise for that. We may, be, uh, we may be happy, and there's verses about joy. Somebody else we may see needs encouragement, and there are words of encouragement in Scripture. We may feel we need victory over sin, and God has promises in Scripture for victory over sin. There is a promise for everything. And Jesus claimed those promises, as we already mentioned in Matthew chapter 4. He quotes from the Old Testament in his times of temptation. Number 10 is that the memorized Bible may be the only Bible you have in the future. Meaning, we may come to the point where your Bible is taken away from you. Once again, you may be thinking, but Chad, I always have my cell phone. But Number one, in the end of time, your phone is a tracking device. I have one too. I'm running off of it right now. Uh, but your phone is a tracking device. In, in the time of the end, in the very end, we won't want a tracking device with us running through you know, the hills and so forth. Uh, so if that's our only place where we have it, we may not have the Bible long, right? But the memorized Bible may be the only Bible you have in the future. Here it is, 10th manuscript release, page 298. Study the word of God. Commit its precious promises to memory so that when we shall be deprived of our Bibles, we may still be in possession of the word of God. We are commanded in the Bible, and we even were told 100 years ago, that we should study the word of God, not just, not just memorize, but study the word of God, commit its precious promises to memory, so that when we shall be deprived of our Bibles, which we might be soon, we may still be in possession of the word of God. We saw in the beginning and last day events that the only place that the Bible can be hidden so that nobody can take it from us is right here. It's written, not with ink somewhere, but written on the mind through memory, through the power of the Holy Spirit. God can bring it back to memory at that time. Now, some people say, but Chad, I, I can't memorize the Bible. Well, if you really, really, truly can't, God knows that. If someone has a serious uh, 
uh, disability, God understands that and he can still be with them. But most of the time, that's not the case, that you really can't. It's that we don't have enough motivation to. For instance, what if I told you that I was a good friend of the richest person in the world? He has over $100 billion. Well, if I told you that, I'd be a liar. I, I'm not friends with anybody like that. Let's just imagine for the moment that I was. And I said to you, hey, I'm going to speak to this group of people um, in Indonesia and maybe people from around the world. And, and I, I go to speak to my wealthy friend and I say, hey, would you do me a favor? You have so much money, you'll never be able to spend it in your whole life, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, would you mind if I give some of the money, if, if I make a challenge to these people uh, from Indonesia Youth for Christ, and I'm going to challenge them for each verse of scripture they memorize in the next week that I will give them $10,000 of your money. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think you could memorize a verse or two over the next week if you were offered $10,000 for every verse? I think you could, right? You'd, you'd think, hey, isn't there that one verse that says Jesus wept? Yeah, I'll bet you could get that down, right? And maybe some of the other ones. And, uh, but I guarantee uh, you'd be thinking, man, uh, I could get a bunch of money and maybe buy a place in the country or something like whatever it is, you know, you pay off my school loans. I, maybe you don't have school loans, but whatever it is, right? Uh, you get the idea. If, if you had enough motivation, you could do it. I, I totally believe it. Most people, 99% of people, um, maybe a little less, but you get the idea. Now, we have a greater, a greater motivation than $10,000 per verse. We have the opportunity to share the word of God with other people that they may be saved for eternity. And these people are the precious jewels, the precious jewels that are in the crown of our Savior, Jesus Christ. People that for eternity will look to you and say, hey, thank you so much. I know you were nervous. I know you were fearful, but thank you for sharing about Jesus Christ with me, for sharing the words of life for all of eternity. Could you imagine how powerful that would be? This is a much greater motivation than simply some money that, you know, the things of this world will pass away. But the souls that are saved in our own soul, this memorization can help, as we already saw, save our own souls and those who hear us. I want to close. Actually, no, I'm not quite done yet. So Gene War, this is a true story of, uh, I, I heard from a man by the name of Gene War. And uh, coincidentally, it's a war story. <laughs> but Gene War, he tells us uh, basically how he had been in World War II. And later on, in what was called where the United States was battling Korea, um, in the Korean, what we call the Korean conflict, the United States, so a, I should say a study was conducted to investigate what is it that makes certain people when they are uh, persecuted in a concentration camp, what is it that makes certain people crack and crumble and break down and give up, and yet other men in these same environments, stay strong until the end. And so they, they began to investigate that. And of the various things that they found, uh, two of them are quite germane, very important to what we're talking about. They found that of those who are able to stand strong during dreadful religious persecution, number one, these were people who in general had strong moral and religious convictions. And number two, is that these were individuals, they said in general, who had stored up in their minds Bible verses and would go over them. This is incredible. Now, if Bible memorization can help men who are being tortured to find victory and not break under a torturous circumstance, is it possible that storing up God's word in our minds and hearts today would help us to get through the trials that we have to go through? The answer is absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. There's power in the word of God.
I want to close with this. Maybe you've heard of Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom uh, was a part of writing a, a fantastic book called The Hiding Place. It's her personal testimony of her, herself and her family and the trials they went through under the Nazis in the Netherlands during World War II. As the Nazis stormed into Holland uh, and took over the country, she and her family were part of something called the Dutch Resistance, where they would hide Jewish people to save their lives. And they had a room set up a, with a wall, a fake wall. It was a real wall, but with, with, uh, behind it, they would hide the Jewish people so the Nazis would not discover them. Well, I'm not here to tell you about that story, but I'm going to tell you about a story. She herself was thrown into a concentration camp later. Her sister died in the concentration camp, and her father died also. But she made it through. And after the war, she ended up becoming a missionary, and she would travel around sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Corey tells a story of when she was younger, her father came to her. Actually, she came to her father, rather, and she was terrified because she began to think that there was a possibility that she would have to die for her faith. And she said to her father, Dad, I'm, I'm afraid because I feel like I don't have enough faith to become a martyr for Jesus. And her father said to her, um, Corey, let me ask you a question. When we take a, a train ride into the city of Amsterdam, there in Holland, how, when, we, when we go to take the train ride, how long before we get on the train do I give you the money? She looked puzzled at him. He said, do I give it to you three days before? And she said, no. He said, when do I give you the money? And she said, dad, you, you give it to me right before we get on the train. And he said, Corey, it's the same way with God. He doesn't need to give us a martyr's faith today if he's not calling us to be a martyr today. But if we choose to follow him step by step, if, if he calls us to be a martyr, he will give us faith, that martyr's faith, when we need it. Now, Corey was in Africa. She, what happened was there was a certain country and there was a certain country that was taken over by some new leadership, and they were calling the government. Uh, the government was calling some of the people from, from the society, the Christians specifically, to the government offices. And as they were called, when they arrived at the government offices, they were executed. The next day, they called another group of Christians to the government office, and they too were executed. Third day, same thing. And right around the third or fourth day, Corey arrived in this African country. And as she, um, she went out, she wanted to spread the gospel there before they would die. And so as she was sharing with the people, she was preaching in a, in a building with, you know, no windows and the light bulb with the bugs flying around it. And she's preaching to them. And as she's preaching to them about Jesus, she notices that people are looking back and forth at each other with fear in their eyes, wondering, is he the next one to die? Is she the next one to be killed? Will I be the next one executed? And they weren't paying attention. And by the way, when you're preaching, you can generally tell when people are not paying attention. And uh, she noticed that. And so she stopped right there. And what she did is she changed her story. And she began to tell that story of when she was a child, how her father told her that, you know, I give you the money right before, and, and, and if God calls you to be a martyr, he will give you a martyr's faith at that time. And when she told that story, now they began to turn back and forth, not with fear and trepidation in their eyes, but instead with joy and comfort in Christ Jesus. And then they began to sing an old hymn. Maybe you've heard it. It's called, In the Sweet By and By. And it says, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. And their hearts were thrilled, 
knowing that God would give them the strength. But Corey said these words. She told us how to prepare because she too had been through great persecution almost to death. Notice what she said for us to tell us how to prepare for the persecution. She told us, she wrote these words later. She said, how can we get ready for the persecution? First, we need to feed on the word of God, digest it, make it a part of our being. This will mean discipline Bible study each day as we not only memorize long passages of scripture, but put the principles to work in our lives. Oh, friend, what a thought. What does she say to do? One who's already been through a great persecution. Not, not sure the final time of trouble, but she went through her own time of trouble. And she said, what will help you in that time is to feed on the word of God daily. Spend time in God's word. Don't miss a day, friends, spending time with Jesus. But number two, also storing up passages of scripture in our minds and in our hearts and allowing those principles to be lived out in our lives. And so I want to make a challenge to you as we close with this message. Uh, number one, and you can do this right at home. We may not be able to be all together in one room, but we are together in the spirit of Christ. And maybe there's somebody. I'm going to ask everyone just now to bow your heads and close your eyes. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to ask, is maybe there's someone who is listening just now and you feel the burden. Maybe you haven't been spending time daily in God's word, but you say, Jesus, I need your help. I need your help to spend time daily in your word. If that's you, would you simply raise your hand where you are just now? God sees your hands. You may put your hands down. Number two, maybe you would like to say, I would like to take a challenge to attempt over the next two months to memorize two verses of scripture per week. That'd be a total of roughly 18 verses in two months. Because I need more of God's word stored up in my heart. Is there anybody who you say, yeah, I, I want to take that challenge to store up God's word in my heart. And I want to I even attempt. And even if you were to fail, it'd be better to attempt and fail than to not try at all. Is there someone who says, you know what? I want to take the challenge to store up God's word in my mind, in my heart, and maybe even try two verses per week for the next two months. If that's your desire, would you simply raise your hand where you are just now? You can raise your hand where you are just now. Heavenly Father, we need you. We need you to help us to be strong for the fight ahead. But Lord, we realize that soldiers are not made in a day. There is a training. There is a boot camp. There are weeks and months of rigorous training. And Father, I pray that spending time with Jesus daily, that the trials that we go through every day, the rigorous trials of life, that they, would, that they would strengthen our spiritual muscles, that they would refine us, that we would shed off some of the things that are keeping us back, and that you would fill our minds with the mind of Christ, that, your, that our minds would be so filled with your word and in the scriptures that, that we would be once again, that you would turn us into the people of the book, of your Bible. Draw us nearer to you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.